All right, welcome everyone. Let's start on our back, either with those knees bent or with those legs extended long. And as you lie on your back, settling onto the yoga mat, into your yogic space, close your eyes and begin the union of mind and body, attention and awareness as you close your eyes to the external world. And just take a look around inside and noticing as you meet your body where it is, just tune in, listen to the body. What is it having to say this morning? Knowing the body communicates with us through sensation. So just tune into that, noticing the messages the body is giving you. And the body parts that you will be accommodating. So just opening up that space in your mind to accept whatever shows up in the physical practice. Just come into a place of being grateful for whatever is available today. And just affirming in your mind, I meet my body where it is, as it is. And I'll choose to work with it rather than against it. And that would be helpful to even carry into the rest of our day, however that might show up. And then once you've addressed the body and get an idea of what's going on in your physical structure, check in at the level of your mind. And just getting a check-in point, a starting point as you observe the activity of your mind and how your senses might have been stimulated since you woke up this morning. And then once you observe what's moving through the mind space, offer up a central point of focus, one word or statement. And really tuning in as you align your mind with your heart's desire. And you align your mind with your ideal physical reality, whatever that means to you. So if you want more help, then let that be our primary focus. If you want more patience, right? Let that be the focus. And then once you've offered up your intention, tune into your heart space and just get a sense emotionally. If you could identify an emotion in this moment, what is that? Tuning into how you're feeling emotionally and energetically. And then slowly deepening that breath even further if you haven't already. And as you hold your attention on your heart, just imagine breath by breath, you're gently massaging away any stress and tension, worry, concern and the actual heart. So letting that belly rise and fall. And then bring attention to your face as that breath continues to deepen. <clears throat> and this morning, I've mentioned this briefly in different classes, when we talk about the power of smiling and the studies that have been done on this. So let's begin the practice here as you continue to breathe mindfully. Offer up a big smile on your face. A big toothy grin. Open up those lips, a big smile. Like really stretching those cheeks up, maybe feeling new muscles waking up in the face. And then just hold that smile as you take about 10 deep breaths. <clears throat> and so tuning in to the power of a smile, really fascinating information. Keep smiling. Researchers at the University of Kansas have published findings that smiling helps reduce the body's response to stress and helps to lower the heart rate. When you forcefully practice smiling, whether you're happy or not, it stimulates the amygdala, the emotional center of the brain, which releases neurotransmitters to encourage an uplifted state. Happiness is what makes us smile. The truth is, a Dr. Isha Gupta, a neurologist, explains that a smile spurs a chemical reaction in the brain. Hold on a second, something's going on here with my view. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. Sorry, I noticed one of you had a video pop up. All right, keep smiling. A smile spurs a chemical reaction in the brain, releasing certain hormones, including dopamine and serotonin, 
Dopamine then increases our feelings of happiness. Serotonin release is associated with reduced stress. Low levels of serotonin are associated with depression and aggression. Low levels of dopamine are associated with depression. And so this is really, again, the power of the mind, the power of every cell in your body eavesdropping on your muscles, the expression on your face, right? So now relax your face if you're still smiling. And then just imagine yourself for a moment before we start to move. Imagine yourself smiling like you're looking in the mirror. And just breathe deeply, slowly. As you imagine that smile literally being received by every cell in your body. There's an ancient Buddhist meditation technique where you offer up an organ smiling meditation and imagine your liver smiling, your kidneys smiling. Right? And so just tuning into that and we'll keep this in mind. I'll give you some more information. And one of the sources is NBC.com. Although I don't watch mainstream media television, I looked up this article quite fascinating. So. <clears throat> if you are interested in learning more, just Google research on smiling or smiling studies. Now let's take another breath here. Exhale it out. And then bring your hands onto your heart and take a moment to acknowledge at least three things in your life that you have reasons to smile about right here, right now. You're breathing. You're on your yoga mat. It's a beautiful day wherever you are, even if it's hot. Right, the sun rose, the planet's still in orbit in space. Right, you have your people, your pets, your loved ones. So we have so many reasons to smile, and yet why don't we more often? And then breathing in the power of that smile as you feel and emotionally connect to something to smile about, just notice how your heart responds, notice how your body relaxes. And then we're gonna carry that smiling energy into the movement. Let's take another breath here. Exhale it out. Let the arms relax by your side. Stretch your legs out long if they aren't already there. <clears throat> and then knees or eyes can be closed or open. Smile on your real face or envisioning that smile as we move. Let's inhale. Reach and lengthen through arms and legs. Point the toes. Spread the fingers. Exhale. Hug right knee into the chest. We're going to stay in motion here. Breath by breath. Take it at your pace. So always open, expanding into the in-breath. Exhale, we hug the opposite knee in and really feeling into each movement, each breath. And so it's kind of like the chicken or the egg, right? Is the smiling what makes us happy? Is the happiness what makes us smile? Turns out it's both. And we have to remember the power of the mind. It speaks in images. So if we can imagine something, the body does not know, neither does the brain, the chemistry of the body does not know if it's actually happening or not. And we can say this over and over again, but then once you start to practice it, you're like, wow, it works. <laughs> so I encourage you to take your smiling practice into your day. Even when there's things that you don't have to smile about, you can instantly shift your mood and start to regulate your nervous system according to these studies. Now, next time the right knee hugs in, whenever you get there, let's just pause. Deep breath here. Exhale with a sigh. And point and flex that right foot, just really tuning in. And can you smile at how hard the feet work for you each day? Even if they ache and they're tired or sore, they do so much for us. Take that moment here to circle the ankle to the right and to the left. Keeping track of your breath as you feel it moving through the abdomen. Now relax that right foot and rock the whole thigh side to side. Smiling over those hips and how they allow your legs to move. Even if they're tight, it means they've been working for you. Or we've been sitting too much, either one. Bring it back in, take another breath here. And then release that right leg, arms extend overhead, inhale. Exhale, bring left knee in. And pause. Again, let that low back soften. Breathing deeply, point and flex your left foot. <clears throat> And rotate ankle one direction. And the other direction. And as you let that left foot go, gently rock the whole left thigh side to side. Okay. 
And then we bring it back to center, deep breath in, exhale, let it go. And then let that left leg release, arms extend overhead. And then exhale, bring both arms down by your sides. Let's just bring those two sides together with the Supta Baddha Konasana, soles the feet touch, knees opening out, make that diamond shape with the legs. And let's begin with the little reclined uh, cat cow. So as you inhale, rock those hips forward, arching through that lower back, arms extend. Exhale, arms by your sides, engage the core without forcing, just noticing as you draw the hips back, you get a deeper stretch through the front of the hips. And then take that a few more times, inhale, and exhale, smiling over how movable your spine is this morning. Remember, your spine's an extension of your brain. It's a big deal that we take good care of it. Thank you, yoga practice, for keeping that spine nice and supple, strong, movable. Take it one more time. Inhale, reach. And then exhale, arms by your sides. Engage the core as you squeeze those knees together. And then bring them both into the chest. And then rock it out, tuning into the whole spine here as you get a little massage through the pelvis, the back, the hips, all the way up through the upper back and shoulders. And then bring it back to center. Option to stay right here, or with your next exhale, you're welcome to lift your head and chest in towards your knees. And then release, head to the earth. And then we're going to bring, bring those feet to the earth. We're going to wake up the back body now working with rolling bridge. So if you want to bring a block or one of those fit balls between your knees or thighs, you're welcome to grab one. Have one here somewhere. And that's just going to help wake up those inner thighs, but also help to activate deeper core muscles so that we're not going into our lower back, right? So if we're feeling the lower back, something's amiss here. We want to feel it more in the legs, the glutes, and the core. So as we set up, bring those elbows out to your sides. And as you bend the elbows, really press down and feel like the shoulder blades are firmly grounded. Back of the head grounded, find a spot to look at right above you. And then lower that spine to the earth for a moment. Grip that blocker ball, we're not gonna lift just yet. Just activate all the back body muscles. So you're just gently pressing down through the back of your head, not your neck. So lift that chin a little bit if it's dropped. Press down through the upper back. Feel those shoulder blades and elbows pressing into the earth. Press the whole spine to the ground, draw that core in, and notice how you naturally tuck your tailbone when you do that. Hips are still on the ground right now. Grip that block or ball without gripping the teeth, unclench the jaw, come back to that smile, and just smile over the power of all those postural muscles we haven't even lifted yet, but feel how they're active. Deep breath in. Exhale it out, maintain that connection now as you grip that block even further and lift those hips just about an inch. So not as high as you normally might go. Scoop that tailbone under even more. So your hamstring should be talking to you. If we're in the right spot, which the gripping that block and ball will help, scoop that tailbone under, you should feel nothing in that lower back. So draw those hips down, find that connection, and then take another breath, inhale. Exhale, maybe lift a little higher from the glutes, not the lower back. So those hamstrings are working, inner thighs are working, breath is steady. And now as we lower, slowly round your spine down. Keep gripping that ball or block. And then let it all relax. Maybe walk those feet out a little further. Stretch your arms straight out to your sides. Palms face up. Deep breath here. And then turning your head now to the left, angle your chin towards your left shoulder, gently pressing right shoulder and the back of the right hand down. So feeling a nice stretch along the right side of the neck. Open and close your mouth a few times so you can relax the jaw. Noticing how that'll help release the neck. <clears throat> and then head to center with your next in-breath. Exhale, chin angles towards right shoulder. And again, feel that left shoulder gently pressing down. So we just get a little counter movement to feel a little deeper stretch. You might keep gripping that block or ball. Notice those inner thighs maybe starting to shake. You're also releasing your psoas here. And then take another breath here into the next stretch. Exhale, bring it back to center. Now you can move that block or ball off to the side. And then before we come on up, let's bring the knees into the chest, rock it out. And we're gonna take a deep windshield wiper twist before we come on up. And then as you bring those feet back to the earth, again, stretch the arms out to your sides. 
Step the feet as wide as it is comfortable for you. So knees wider than the hips will bring us right into alignment as we come into twist. So inhale here. Exhale, let your knees go to the left as you turn your head and chin again to the right shoulder. And then feel that breath expanding through the right side body. If there's any pressure in this right knee, just lift it a little bit. Take a deep breath here. Exhale it out. And then inhale, head and knees return to neutral. Inhale, exhale the other side. Knees go right, turning to look towards the left. Deep breath into those muscles between each rib. And then inhale, bring it back through. And now keep the knees wide, just kind of that first stage of happy baby here. Before we come on up, let the hips stay heavy on the ground and just rock those hips side to side. Knees are wide. And then as those knees come back to center, take a full breath here. Option to lift the head on the next exhalation or keep it on the ground. And then release, head to the earth. And let's make our way now, rolling off to one side or take a spinal rock to come on up. And let's come on to all fours. And as we come into a tabletop position, spread the fingers wide. And we're going to come in on a puppy for a moment here, getting a nice stretch to the upper back, shoulders, and chest. So just work within the range of movement that feels right for your shoulder joints. Let's bring those knees a little wider. Stretch your hands towards the upper corners of your mat and try to turn the hands slightly out. So the thumb is kind of moving forward, right? So we just have a slight external rotation through the hands. Fingers are pointing off towards the upper corners of the mat. If that doesn't feel good, certainly straighten them out. And then on your exhale, let's draw the hips back. Keep that core drawn in. So we have a nice neutral lower back rather than going into a back bend. And then inhale, come on up. Hands are heavy, fingers pressing into the ground. And just getting a sense as we stretch the triceps, the armpit area into the chest, keep the jaw soft. And just see if you can keep your head in line with your arms, your ears in line with those biceps. Feel free to pause at any time or maybe stay in motion if those shoulders are super tight. And then if you are pausing, let's take another breath here and then come on up. Let's level off the hands now so that they are under the shoulders or maybe slightly in front, but they're in line with those knees and come to three rounds of full cat cow. Inhale, let the belly draw down. Exhale, round. And then breathing, moving with that breath. And just again, taking that moment just to smile at the health, the flexibility of your spine, the ability to move easily, gracefully, a whole expression, move it or lose it, we all know to be true. And so we honor and appreciate, right, all the ways in which the body is able to fluidly move with the breath. And then as you exhale, release it back, either child's pose or stretch it out in your first downward dog. And if you are taking downward dog, walk those feet and hands as wide as you can. It should feel really good to let the shoulders soften. And as you pedal out those heels, see if you can do a cross stretch. So if you're pressing your right heel down, actively reach and lengthen through your left arm and hand, and you'll be bending that left knee. And then switch. So it's like as those feet are pedaling out, we're also stretching across. Right, right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. And let the head go, nodding yes. Turn the head now and soften through the jaw. Come back to your attention if you haven't connected with it in a while. And then tuning in again to the power of smiling. Smiling can trick your brain into believing you're happy which can then actually spur feelings of happiness. The brain is also connected to the nervous system, asserting that has been shown over and over again that depression weakens your immune system. Happiness and smiling have been shown to boost our body's resistance. Again, another reason smiling is literally good for your health. Boost those happy hormones and chemicals. And then if you laugh, you really bump it up. You release about $50,000 worth of pharmaceutical chemicals <laughs> naturally occurring in your body every time you laugh. Pretty crazy, but amazing. 
So let's come on up. We're going to take our way to standing or make our way to standing. Step up with one foot, a step up with the other. And then come into your forward fold. Be very generous with the bend in those knees. Let those shoulders release. Turn that head and then give the support you need so you're not feeling this in the lower back in an uncomfortable way. Belly on those thighs. So let those strong leg muscles hold you here. Elbows or hands for additional support. And then if you can let that head go, again, maybe just turn side to side. And again, just come back to connecting with the things that you have to smile about today. And it's amazing. So many beautiful things present in our life all day, every day, and yet we never notice. Or maybe not never, hardly notice, right? Now, if it feels good, you can start to bend and straighten one leg than the other. You can even do this if the elbows are on those thighs. Just make sure that feels okay for the lower back. And then drape the body again one more time before we come up with the head go. And then we're going to rise slowly, bend those knees even further, hands to thighs, and pressing through that chair pose as we come all the way up, shrug the shoulders, and then release back and down. Standing tall, take a full breath in, a long breath out. Again, and close your eyes and smile. And if we can hold that smile for about 30 seconds, right, it unleashes that beautiful chemical reaction, dopamine, serotonin, and it's free. <laughs> we can take it wherever we go. We can do it in any moment we need to. So let's take another breath here in that smiling place. And then we're going to move through sun salutation. So inhale, reach up. Eyes can be opened or closed. Exhale, release and fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands. Step it back with your left leg. <clears throat> your choice, low, mid, or high lunge. And then pause. So even when it's uncomfortable, right? I've joked over the years, smiling is the advanced variation. And now it turns out, yes, it is true. So even within challenge or difficulty, right, we can balance out the stress response, anxiety, overwhelm, whatever it might be in a moment, just by tuning in. And so try it. Give that happy, tight hip on the left side. Smile. Why is it tight? Because how many steps did you take yesterday? How many stairs have you climbed? How many golf courses have you walked? How many grandbabies have you chased? Right? There's a lot that these hip flexors do. No wonder they're tight. So we can befriend them. We can understand them. Smile into them. Be grateful. Say, wow, I really have used my hips. Right? So now we give them a chance to release. Let's take another breath here. Exhale. Let it go with the side. And then reach it back. And let's slide around. We're just going to switch on to the other side here. Bring that left foot forward just match whatever ones you just offered, low, mid, or high. And settling into the second side, and eyes can be opened or closed. And just imagine sending that smiling energy into the right hip. So I think that the words of Wayne Dyer in his, his brilliance and his purpose while he was in a body, and he said, it's impossible to be grateful and stressed at the same time. So we can also think of that as it's impossibly stressed and happy at the same time. And so the cool thing about our mind and what makes it so powerful is that we can absolutely change, right, the inner response without needing to change the outer circumstance or situation, right? And so once we learn that, which I call a superpower, <laughs> It's helpful. It's a tool right there within our reach, any moment, any time of the day. And there's also research on uh, the smiling and, and just even to strangers, how it's contagious. And it's true, just taking a moment to smile, to look at somebody, to acknowledge them. There's something that's uplifting about that, right? Even if it's just a split second interaction. Let's take another breath here. So not only is smiling good for us, it actually affects everyone else around us even strangers, right? So let's slowly come up now. And then as you do, let's bring that left leg around. 
and then stretch it back, either child's pose, downward dog, or take your vinyasa if you wanna stretch it all out, moving through your variation of chaturanga. And then we're gonna come up to stand again in just a moment. So find your reset in whatever way is working for you. And then as we're ready, let's return to the top of the mat or middle and come into your Uttanasana again, folding over those legs with the head, neck, shoulders soften. And then bend those knees. Let's draw those hips down, come all the way up. And hands to the heart. Deep breath in, long breath out. Let's step towards the top of the mat. We're gonna work with our warrior two this morning and triangle pose. So as we step to the top of the mat, let's step back with the right leg <clears throat> and make sure those toes are pointing forward. And then check in this left foot forward. Sometimes this leg is too far behind. So you can scoot it forward towards your computer screen so that if you were to measure that left heel would intersect right about the middle of the right foot. And let's just start with that left leg straight, hands to hips. And just begin by gently moving those hips side to side. It's not a big movement here. And then finding that place where those hips are level, meaning that torso isn't leaning side to side, but straight up and down. Now keep that as you press into your right foot, draw the tailbone slightly under. So feel your right glutes engage. Keep this hip and glute right where it is as you bend the left knee. Now we think this leg's doing all the work, but if we're doing it with proper alignment, this leg is really doing work. <laughs> so straighten this left leg again. Again, find that activity, squeeze that right glute, press out through that right foot. Whole leg is strong as you bend into your left knee, but feel like your center of gravity, right? The weight is right in the hips, pelvis. So it's neither leaning one side or the other. And then reach those arms off to your sides. Palms are face up. And then maybe we scoot that left foot out a little bit more. See so if you can feel this left knee pressing slightly back. So this left glute is drawing under as well. And then press actively through both feet. <clears throat> Deep breath in, long breath out. Keep that left leg as it is. Bring your right hand to your hip. We're not twisting or turning, right? This is a side bend. So imagine those shoulders are against a wall and you're just gonna lean to your, your right towards that extended leg. If that shoulder is talking, you just keep the hands on hips. But keep a deep bend in that left knee and notice that stretch you're getting through the left side. And then come on up, straightening that left leg, smiling over those strong leg muscles here. Shoulders relax. And now shift your hips to the right as you let your spine lengthen left. We're gonna ease toward triangle pose. Again, this is a good one to practice against a wall. Shoulders and hips against the wall. The feet, not so much. So have those heels about an inch or so from the baseboard if you're doing that. And then let's pause. So as the hips move right, from the spine is still a nice straight line. Keep this left side strong. So micro bend this left knee if there's any pressure. Hands can stay on hips. If you extend the arms, the spine shouldn't move. So we're not suddenly collapsing, right? Feel the power in the alignment. And then breathe. If you want a little more core challenge, you can float that left arm out in either direction. But the torso stays long from the head to the tailbone, deep breath here. Smiling into your power and strength. And then bend that left knee and come all the way up. <clears throat> Straighten your left leg. Turn the foot in and let's take a wide-legged forward fold here. Inhale, lift, lengthen, looking slightly up. Exhale, let's bend the knees slightly, hinge from your hips rather than your spine. And then once you reach that point, you wanna let those hands release to the earth, to the blocks. You can always go a little wider with those feet. Feel free to bend those knees as much as you need to to get out of a pulling sensation in that lower back. It's okay if you feel something in those hamstrings. Let the head go. And then coming back to that inner smile or perhaps recognizing in your life in this moment as it is, the many things that you actually have to smile about that are worth smiling about. So why not? Why not smile on that, their behalf and by doing so, unleash a whole pharmacopoeia of natural chemicals in your body and mind that actually promote health and well-being. Let's take another breath here. 
as do these inversions, getting a little extra blood flow into the brain, resting the heart. Let's walk those hands out in front, fingertips to the earth. Heel toe your feet. We're going to move toward yogi squat before we take that second side. So toes turned out, heels turned in. And you can come into stage one. Let your knees decide which stage to take. Stage two, those feet might come in a little closer. Maybe the elbows come down. And remember, one stage is not better than the other. It's really a test. Can we stop and meet our body where it needs to be rather than where that ego or mind thinks it needs to be? There's a big difference sometimes. So just practicing the patience and the pause, whatever stage you're in, come back to your breath. And just smiling over the ability to release those hips, release pressure through that lower back, to help aid in digestion. And then on your next exhale, if you are in stage one or two and we're in an upright position, you can come to stand. If you're closer towards the earth, we can transition into a forward fold. And then as you bend those knees, coming all the way back up, <clears throat> shoulders release. And let's take side two here. As we open up into our warrior two, open the toes of the right foot towards the back of your mat. Right heel again, intersecting the middle of your left foot. So it's okay to move this right foot forward towards that long end if you need to. And let's just start out by getting a little movement through the hips, right? Noticing where you might feel the tightness <clears throat> without forcing. But noticing the difference too when this hip is dropped versus it's lifted in line, that forces us to activate this left gluteal area, right? So that right there can make a big difference in our alignment, but also our progress in this pose. So let's pause now with hips even, press through that left foot. So engage that left glute, give it a little squeeze, press it out. And then keep this, like somebody's holding onto your hip so you can't move it. And then bend that right knee. So these hips stay lined, aligned, in line. <laughs> and then as you move, feel this left leg kick in every time. So it's helping to stabilize the pelvis, the spine. And the next time you bend that knee, let it line up over the ankle. Drawing the right glute under. Now both glutes are strong. Arms reach out, palms face up. And breathe. And as we come into Peaceful Warrior, left hand to hip. And then as you keep a deep bend in that right knee, reaching up. So heart and chest and gaze still facing straight ahead. If there's anything going on in the shoulders, just keep the hands to hips. Breathing into that nice stretch to the right side. And then strong legs coming all the way back up. Arms reach out, take another breath here. Exhale, let it go. Press through both feet, strong legs, hands to hips as we move toward triangle. Shift the hips now, opposite of what we just did. And we'll just take this side to side for a moment. So now the legs aren't really moving, but we are moving from the hips up through the spine. Micro bend that right knee if you feel any pressure there. And as we settle into this side, again, torso stays long. Maybe we add the arms. Okay, you can reach that right arm out for more challenge. Keep the core engaged. Keep drawing that tailbone under so you're not feeling that in the lower back. Getting a chance to strengthen rather than strain. Take another breath here. Exhale it out. And then as we come on up, bend that right knee. Press firmly through both feet, both legs, and make your way back. Inhale here. Exhale, let it go. Shoulders release. Straighten your right leg. Turn it in. Let's take one more forward bend here. Rinsing it out, bringing those two sides together. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold, bend those knees. So you can always pause at the halfway point or drape the body down. Maybe go a little deeper, further if we want to widen the stance, the feet. Bend those knees. And then here you might want to take a couple options with the arms. Maybe stretch those arms out like a wide-legged downward dog, and then pull those hips back. Or maybe you want to deepen that stretch of the back body by folding further forward. You can also stay right in the middle, but let the tension out of your neck, your face, your jaw, come back to your own intention for the practice. And 
And then smiling on behalf of your own body and all that it's able to work with and work through on your yoga mat today. And we're going to come up in just a moment. So as we prepare to do so, pressing into the fingertips, heel toe the feet in a little closer, toes turned out, heels in, and then one arm at a time, bring the hands to the thighs. So we're just going to come into the first stage of squat and then press through those legs, come all the way up, shoulders back and down. And then step those feet back together, walk it out. And let's pause in Tadasana. And close your eyes as you pause and smile into the strength and stability, mobility and flexibility of your own body and mind. And smiling over the gift of self-care that you give yourself in the name of a yoga practice and all the other things you do throughout the day. To keep your own body, mind, and heart in a place of balance and alignment. And then as you open those eyes, if you close them, just bring the hands together at the heart. And let's make our way to the top of the mat if you're not already there. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale with a sigh, lengthen and fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands, step it back, and make a choice. Maybe you want to pause and plank here. You can also move through your chaturanga. Or of course, we can reach it back, downward dog, or child's pose. And then wherever you've landed, again, coming back to your breath. And coming back to that awareness within you and all the reasons in which you have to smile. Researchers at the University of Kansas published findings that smiling helps reduce the body's response to stress and helps to lower heart rate in tense situations. Another study links smiling to lowering blood pressure. Yet another study suggests that smiling leads to longevity. Studies aside, there are plenty of living, breathing, smiling humans can testify that as you smile, it makes you feel better. And so taking a moment again to come back to that, and if you think about it, if you've ever traveled the world, smiling really becomes a universal language of kindness, right, of acknowledgement, and a smile can open doors, it can change a mood, it can change the tone of your voice, right? Even if you're upset, just by smiling, it can change a lot in terms of the vibration we emit outward. So come on up now as we sit and bring those legs around in one position or one Position out in front of us, shake them out. And as we bring the right knee in, you have a couple options. You can cross that foot over. You could also bend this bottom knee as long as the knees are okay and that right hip can come down. All right, so find what's working for you today and let's sit up nice and tall. Bring that left arm around the right knee or shin. So we don't want to round and hunch, just see where you can go by keeping that chest lifted and then right hand behind. And then letting the shoulders soften, close your eyes. And again, bring that smile onto your face. And as you hold awareness, the organs of the right side of the body as you're twisting, just imagine smiling into the liver, the ascending colon, right, the right lung, the right kidney. And as you're breathing, imagine massaging all of your vital organs, sending a sense of peace and calm, happiness. And just knowing that all of our vital organs and systems work best when we are calm and relaxed. So again, that smile can shift us out of a stress response. As we already know, the breath can as well. So when we combine the two, the body gets those signals that all is well, it's safe. Right? It's safe for us to digest, to process, to let go. And then on your next breath here, slowly untwist. Deep breath in as we pause through center. Exhale, take a counter twist, opening to the left. 
Gonna stop for another full breath here. And then bring it all back through. Uncross and we'll set up for that second side, shake out the legs. And then matching whatever you did on that first side, if it's available in terms of the legs, that left knee comes in, cross over. And again, option to bend that knee. And sometimes it's not the best option. So decide that for your body based on what you're feeling. And then once you're there, sit up tall, right arm around that left knee, left arm around behind. And then once in position, again, close your eyes, come back to that smile, whether you're just imagining it or actually letting it happen on your face. And then sending some love and attention and happiness into the organs of the left side. Could you gently massage breath by breath? Acknowledging your stomach, spleen, pancreas, descending colon, left kidney, left lung, your heart. And then with the next breath, let's inhale it back through center. And then exhale, find that counter twist one more time over to the right. <clears throat> and then bring it all back through center, shake it out. And then bring those big toe bones to touch for Pachimottanasana. Bend those knees, inhale, reach up, lengthen through the torso. Exhale, fold, belly resting on the thighs, head bowing towards the heart. Let the shoulders release. Just turn that head side to side if that feels good for the neck. Open the jaw, relax the mouth, soften the face. And again, head and heart smiling toward each other. As we pause here for a few moments. Smiling is contagious, much like yawning. This is because we have mirror neurons that fire when we see action. As the name suggests, mirror neurons enable us to copy or reflect the behavior we observe in others. And these have been linked to the capacity for empathy. Smiling is contagious, not just because of how it looks on the outside, but because of the intention and the feeling that is put behind a smile. When someone smiles at you, you feel the good vibes from them, which makes you want to pass a smile on to the next person, and so on. We should make a conscious effort not to take smiles from our loved ones for granted, and to keep in mind that across the globe, a smile can mean so much more than a simple facial movement. And when we see someone smiling or we smile at ourselves in the mirror, it can trigger our own mirror neurons, but it can also help us calm down and recenter if we're feeling anxious or low. There's solid evidence that smiling does us a world of good. And as we try it out for ourselves, we might notice how powerful and effective it is. And so if that's not reason to smile, I don't know what is. <laughs> Let's offer another breath here. Exhale, let it go. And then slowly rise up here. And as you come on up, let's just shake out those legs. And then we're gonna to scoot towards the top of the mat. If you still have your block handy and you wanna work with the little restorative bridge, little nervous system reboot, you can bring that here. You can also just work with constructive rest. Equally effective, just a matter of preference. So let's scoot towards the top of the mat. Inhale, rock forward. Exhale, roll halfway down. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, coming up. And exhale, all the way down. As you round to the earth, bring those knees in and rock it out side to side. So we're going to take recline pigeon here. If you prefer to take a different uh, pose, a twist or something, that's fine. So if we're taking our recline pigeon, bring left foot to the earth, right ankle to the thigh. So we did a lot to strengthen through those hips, those glutes. So let's give them a chance to stretch out here. Start by pressing that right thigh away. Take a few breaths. If there's a lot of sensation here, you're welcome to stay here. And then if we're adding on, we can do that without the arms or bring those arms 
and wrap them around that left thigh. And then wherever you are, we can certainly rock forward and back or just pause. Let's just take about five deep breaths, relaxing, softening, perhaps smiling into the sensation. Releasing all those happy hormones. I don't know if you've ever seen the documentary Heal, it came out many years ago, but uh, much like some of the other things that have been released over the years, what the bleep do we know? But it's showing that cellular activity, but the the idea of laughing, right? Watching comedy, things that are funny rather than overly dramatic or serious can be a helpful way too to practice smiling and to boost those happy hormones, especially if we're not feeling very good. So let's take another breath here before we release. And if it feels good before we let this side go, let's just rock it out side to side. And then uncross, extend that right leg, press up through the heel. Let's lower it all the way down and then shake it out. And let's take it to the other side, right foot to the earth, left ankle to right thigh. And we press that left thigh away to start just to see what's going on on this side. And choosing to stay here or proceed to that next step. And then wherever you are coming back, smiling into that release that you're offering through those hips, through the glutes. And just a few more breaths here, softening, pausing into the release. And next breath, let it go with a sigh. And again, before release, if it feels good for you, rock it out side to side. And then let it go as you uncross, untangle arms and legs, and then extend that left leg up and slowly lower all the way out and down. And then stretch both legs out for a moment, shake out those legs. And then if you want to work with restorative bridge before we make our way into Shavasana, you can bring that block off to your side. You can also just work with restore or a constructive rest pose if you prefer. And so as we set up, just bring both knees in for a moment, rock it out. And then plant the feet to the earth. So remember, we don't want a big, deep back bend. So the flat, wide setting of the block is ideal. Just enough to elevate those hips a little bit without pushing into the lower back. So make sure the block is beneath your pant line. So it should be on the bony part of your pelvis, your hips, not the soft flesh of your lower spine, right? So we don't wanna pinch in the actual spine. And you might bring those feet a little wider, arms can be down or maybe off to the side. And if you're working with restorative bridge, we'll be here just about 10 deep, slow breaths. See if you can let the hips feel heavy, release into either the earth or the block on each exhalation. This has a really profound effect on calming the nervous system. And it's just relaxing, releasing each breath again, tuning into the power of smiling. And what's so great is I was planning on teaching on this and then one of the things that popped up on my social media feed, because it can read your mind, which is crazy was on smiling, which is <laughs> so I'm like, oh, thank you, universe. So tuning into the power of these words today, remember to smile. Smile because you have options. Smile because you have the power of choice. Smile because you have more chances. Smile knowing you are loved. Smile because you are divinely supported. Smile because you can embrace all of the possibilities available to you today. Smile because you're grateful. Smile because you're blessed. Smile because your dreams are designed to become your reality. Smile because you are alive. Smile just because you can. I don't know who that's by, it's going to give an author. 
So coming back to your body, if you're in constructive rest pose or bridge, restorative bridge, then prepare to release. So if that block is underneath you, next breath or two, just slide it out. Let the whole spine soften to the earth again. And then any final movements you'd like to offer the body before we surrender into Shavasana, you can offer them now. That might be as simple as just bringing knees in, rocking it side to side. If you want to take another twist or a happy baby pose, just accommodate whatever would feel good for your body before surrendering into your final resting position. And whether that is a Shavasana with support um, or perhaps constructive rest, keeping knees bent. And then once you settle in, and just take three final breaths here, sweeping away any remaining stress or tension of mind and body. And then just feel the weight of your body releasing into the support of the earth. As you let your intention return to the center of your mind. And as you relax your face into a soft smile, just imagine sending the power of that smile to wherever the body might need extra healing, attention. And as you send that smile into those parts of the body, can you visualize them healed or remember when they were healed, when they were healthy? As you rest here, just imagining like a movie screen in your mind of the people nearest and dearest to you. And just allow it to play through your mind like a little movie video as you see each and every one of them with a big smile on their face. Maybe they're even laughing. And so just observing, maybe perhaps seeing your husband or wife, your children, your grandchildren, your pets. That smile, I've seen it. Just imagine, it's playing just like a reel in your mind, a bunch of happy faces, smiling people. You set your heart ablaze with love, with affection, with connection, happiness. And just pause with this visual, this little smiling meditation for a few moments while I'm quiet. And noticing, as I mentioned earlier, these mirror neuron neurons, again, just imagining other people smiling especially people we love, right? Where our happiness is oftentimes connected or tethered to their happiness, right? If they're suffering, we might suffer. So take a moment to play this out as a reel in your mind for a few moments. And just observing the chemical reaction in your own body. Maybe the smile on your face grows bigger just by seeing all the happy people in your life smiling in your mind. Notice how your body relaxes. And as you declare, smiling is my superpower. And today I practice sharing my smile with everyone I meet, everywhere I go. And just notice how it can shift someone's mood. And it might lift someone's spirits just smiling. Even if you're on the phone and you can't see the person, you can smile with your voice. And so it can be helpful in both ways, right? When we're happy, that smile might feel natural. When we're not so happy, that smile can actually lift us up. Fake it till you make it, theory. 
So coming back now, as you allow that smile to expand across your face, to move even deeper into your heart, imagine that smile moving into every cell of your body. Just wiggle your fingers and toes, deepening that breath, smiling into the breath, that life force that sustains you, giving you the gift of another day. And as we end our practice, we make this commitment to ourselves. As I move through the day, I will focus on the things in my life that I have to smile about. And I'll appreciate in that moment, wow, so grateful. And I'm finding in the simplest, most somewhat mundane moments, I'm exuding happiness in ways like I haven't experienced before, right? Seeing a beautiful flower sprouting in the garden, sitting out on the porch before sunrise and the crisp coolness before a hot blazing day settles in. So there's so much to smile about. If we want our awareness and our happy chemicals to align with that, then that's what I offer you for the day as you come back. And then coming into a seated position as you're ready, bringing those knees into the chest. And then we're just going to sit for a moment in meditation here. And as we do, sitting up tall, let those shoulders release back and down. And then close your eyes and let a big smile spread across your face. The kind where your lips are parted, teeth are showing. And then make it a big smile like you're really using those muscles of your face. It's going to feel forced. It's like a joker smile where your eyes are closed. Nobody can see you. And then as you exhale, just relax the face. Let all those muscles soften. Come back to your breath. And now try a mid-smile. Not quite as forced, not quite as big. It's like you're taking a picture smile. You don't want to be all crinkly-eyed or squishy face. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. I smile too big and then my cheeks are like up to my eyes. And so you're just seeing yourself as you're doing this, as if you're looking into a mirror. And now relax your face. And one more time, a smile that just feels natural to you, like you're taking your photo. And then let it relax. And just noticing the effects of that. It might feel like you actually want to smile more, right? That might start to feel like a more natural or relaxed position. And while it feels like we're using a lot of muscles to smile, I always find this amazing, but it takes less muscular activity of your face to smile than it does to frown, which is kind of strange. <laughs> we don't typically feel those frowning muscles, possibly because that might be our natural resting base, right? Just sort of a stern look. So now just slightly turn the corners of your lips upwards. So just like a little small smile, like a smirk. The eyes are closed. The teeth are unclenched, so the jaw is relaxed. And just come back to your focal point for the practice, your intention. If this awareness on smiling has resonated, then you can certainly work with today. I choose to smile for all the beautiful things present in my life. I even smile at the challenges that help me grow and become clear on the choices I wish to make. Challenges can also remind us of what's really important and what needs to be a priority. Can we smile for all the wonderful miracles and blessings present within us and around us? May we share the power of our smile with everyone we encounter today, may that be our practice. And then noticing the challenge of doing that, but also how it can shift something in a moment. Maybe you'll get lucky and approach someone that's in a bad mood. And you could be the reason that mood shifts or changes. So coming back now as we bring the palms together in front of the heart. And as we allow our heads to Bow to our hearts, just offer a smile from your mind into your heart. 
and smiling for all that you were able to do and connect with in the name of your yoga practice today. When I smile with gratitude for all the ancient yogis that kept this system alive so that we could benefit from it, benefit from it in this modern age where we need to be reminded of these principles and teachings now more than ever. And to remember that the purpose of life is joy and that we have pleasant, plenty of reasons to smile about. And the more that we smile about the reasons already present, the more we draw things into our life to smile about. And then that becomes contagious. We bow to this place of feeling happy on the inside and sharing that happiness and connection with each other as we move into our day. Thank you for smiling with me. Namaste.